Hi guys, how are you? I'm going to move this a little bit closer. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? We are going to do some MTG on his tail. It's looking just a little bit dry. It's been probably at least 10 days since I've put it on his tail and I put it on his hocks and hamstrings last night. It doesn't look like he's rubbed anymore. So yeah, scoot your butt. Whoa, good boy. Okay. So this is how I do the MTG on his tail. And I've only done this a couple times or so. So you wanna make sure you shake it. That stuff kinda of gets stuck on the bottom and you need to shake it just to kinda of move it around so you get full strength. So this is what I was trying to explain last night in the dark <laughs> is what I do with his tail is I start at the top and just kind of spread the tail hairs and just try to put this down to the tailbone. And kind of rub along, rub in as I go along. And again, I searched a while back videos of people using MTG on the tails and manes and I didn't really find anything that I could see unless I just wasn't um, doing this, the right type of search. But it looks like he still has some dandruff here, but I'm kind of overdue for doing this. This is supposed to moisturize their tails and yeah, I was gonna try to give him a bath today, or not a bath, but I'm gonna try to wash his tail, but that, um, that didn't happen today. <laughs> it's not really chilly, but um, yeah, now scoot your butt over, scoot over. So I thought, I want to at least try to do this today and um, then if I can give him a bath over the weekend if the weather's okay or not a bath I keep saying bath <laughs> if I get to wash his tail over the weekend if the weather's warm enough that's what I want to do because it might be one of the t last tail washings that I'll be able to do before we start to get too cold of weather to do that so I usually, and this is what I do with my do-it-yourself conditioner too. Um, I do the same thing. I just go down the center of the tail. I, you know, kind of spread the tail hairs to get to the tailbone. And once I get to the end of the tailbone, which is, is right here, then I try to do a little bit on the sides too. So I split the hairs here. And then just go along each side of the center. What? <laughs> Can you scoot your butt over? No, that's the wrong way. Scoot your butt. Good boy. <laughs> Oh boy, whoa, good boy. <laughs> okay, so let me get one of my combs too. I'm gonna try to massage this in. So I also do it this way with my do-it-yourself conditioner, which I was talking about that last night. And I did put some tags on that video, but I didn't add the video links yet. I started to and then um, 
I got distracted. <laughs> so I haven't done that yet. But it is really easy to find. Oh my goodness, no, get, get, get. He does not like cats or dogs. <laughs> and that cat just like went right between his back legs. <laughs> um, yeah, now what was I saying? <laughs> See, that's what happens. <laughs> I have so many animals that when I go to do something, sometimes I just get distracted. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> I get distracted and then I forget what I was doing or what I was going to do and I go do something else. So, <laughs> Oh my goodness. He does not know what he's doing. <laughs> Okay, he's laying down playing with the bell boots now. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. Um, oh, I think I was saying the do it yourself conditioner is pretty easy to find if you go to my page. And it's, um, I was looking today. It is under, um, I do have a playlist, do it yourself projects, I think it's called. Um, it's kind of, you'll have to scroll down just a little bit, but my fly spray recipe one of them is there along with um, the do-it-yourself conditioner recipe so yeah you can see that there and I have changed it just a little bit not a whole lot and I need to just do a new video to do to show the new way but it's pretty much the same stuff. It's just a little bit more of, I think, the baby oil. But you don't want to overdo the baby oil because then it attracts more dirt. But I'm seeing like with this, this is kind of oily <laughs> and can attract some dirt too. But it does moisturize it. And like I said, it's helped his, whatever he has going on here. And see, yeah, he has sand stuck here. So I'm gonna go ahead and brush that out. That's the only thing I don't really like about this. And that's the one good thing about the do-it-yourself conditioner is um, the ingredients for it. Um, with the suave conditioner, it doesn't, it doesn't attract dirt. Um, yeah, so it kind of, it moisturizes and kind of soaks in and it doesn't stay oily like this and it doesn't attract dirt because it's like, we're all dirt out here. Like the pasture, the horse, all the horse pens, it's just all dirt. And, um, yeah, so whenever they lay down, um, if they're not in their house with their shavings, then the dirt just sticks. So I want to take a look at his dandruff. Yeah, I want to try to wash his tail before we get our rain, which I don't think it's really until next week. I think it's like Tuesday. And it said we're supposed to get colder temperatures, but I don't think it's really um, that cold to where if I hook my hose up to um, the bathtub so we have warm water, I think it'll be fine. And with his tail, with the Lucky Braid shampoo, um, the Lucky Braids, it's just like so easy. I just basically wet his tail, put the Lucky Braids in, massage it and stuff, and then rinse it out. And because it doesn't, it's not like real soapy and lathery, it rinses out really quick and easy, which is good too if you're trying to get it done really quick, like in colder weather. <laughs> And for horses that don't like it, and like, he, he doesn't like to get his tail washed, but as long as I've been using the warmer water hooked up to my bathtub in the house, he does, he does better with it. 
even with his sheath area. The last time I did it, he let me do his sheath and was like so, so good. Where I've tried it before and it's not that he's like really bad, but he just moves around. He'll move back and forth. And with the warmer water, he just stood there and was a very good boy. So, whoops. So this is Thursday. Hope you guys are having a good Thursday. And I just want to talk about, um, give a shout out to Missy Wren. And that's M-I-S-S-Y-W-Y-R-N. I think it is. Missy Wren. And um, I subscribed to her a while back. And um, I get... Nah, ah, 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 get I really like her approach. She has a great approach. She's um, the one, I don't know if you have seen her or know about her. She's um, gentle. She's a gentle horse trainer. I think, um, I don't know if that's her method, gentle horse training, but um, she just had a video today and I think it was having a flexible mind for horse training. I think that's what it was called. Something like that. It's her latest video as far as I know. But if you get a chance, watch it. Because I like totally agree with that. And um, I think I think that's true. You know, you can have your ways of doing things. Her Her frustration was, you know, the different like methods or programs out there that say you do this this and this and this and I kind of have the same frustration and the same belief because I don't think that I don't think that you can like really put it in order and follow something like that you know I'm a fitness trainer I've probably said that I don't know how many times in all my videos but in case you don't know or haven't seen me <laughs> I'm a fitness trainer and I believe in that too for my fitness training. It's like you can have your guidelines and your method, but you have to be willing to be flexible and change it when you need to and not feel like you have to stick to it no matter what. And I think, um, I think there are people, I think he has an itch. You got an itch? Do I itch? What? Okay, let's see. <laughs> let's see, show me your itch. You got an itch? You can't go any place though. Okay. <laughs> oh, you got an itch right here? You stay right there. Where is it, here? Here, let's use the comb here. Is that it? Excuse me, I have to take care of my horsey <laughs> and his itch. You got another one? Am I getting it? A pyre? <laughs> Good boy. Is that it? How's that? Is that good? <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's put you back on here. Okay, um, hopefully that was it. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think you have to, especially when you're working with somebody else, you know, being a fitness trainer, I competed in bodybuilding and you know, you can, I learned to listen to my body and myself and adjust things for me. And then it's a different story when you have somebody else that you're working with in addition to you, whether it's a person or a horse. Um, I think at least with people you can get feedback, but sometimes that feedback isn't as honest as the feedback that you get from horses. <laughs> um, 
because sometimes people aren't in touch with their feelings or, you know, what they're feeling in their body and stuff. So sometimes it's guesswork for, for them too. Um, but my, the thing that I was getting at was I always wanted to write a book <laughs> for fitness and how to train, how to eat and everything. And I just have never been able to do it because I don't think you can put it into words because it's always different for each person. You know, it's like things can change. Things can be similar. Hi, Susan. <laughs> Um, I was just talking about how to write a book or writing a book that I always wanted to write a book that um, but I've just always found it hard to like try to put things into a method. I was talking about methods and um, <clears throat> um, Missy Wren, she's on YouTube here. She's a horse trainer. She has the gentle horse training gentle horse training method I think is her method um, and I, I really like her approach because it's gentle it's not forcing anything on the horse you know I like to watch a lot of different people though and I learn different things from different people you know there's Clinton Anderson um, Warwick Schiller James um, Carson James and then then there's the Western Pleasure trainers that I like to watch. Dana Hokana, Cleve Wells. Um, Jeremy LaRose. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying that I always wanted to, but I, I just can't because I just don't feel like you can put everything into a book. And I was talking about... Um, Although I would like to, <laughs> um, but I was talking about Missy Wren's channel on here. I saw a video that she did today, and I really I agree with it, and I I really like it. But she talked about um, having a flexible mind for horse training, and I so agree with that. You know, there's these clinicians that have their methods <laughs> that people take and follow. Possibly. <laughs> I think I'm starting on something that like happened today and I was like that kept popping in my mind that I might do something like that. Um, and I don't know if I would like gear it towards fitness or horses or both, but it's maybe the starting of that possibly. <laughs> um, or maybe just a video series. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maybe just a video series. Um, but I just find it hard because the thing that I was reading today, well, I read like from, from I think, three different things. And it's funny because the parts that I read of three different things, it all went together. And it gave me like a message. And then when I saw this video from Missy Wren, that even went with it too. It was kind of like the closing of everything that I read this morning. And then I saw that later and it was like, wow, okay, everything's connected. I don't know if you watch Manifest. It's a new series on TV. It's one of my favorite shows now <laughs> for nighttime. Um, in addition to The Voice, I like to watch The Voice. <laughs> but Manifest... Yeah, that, that's an interesting series. It's a pretty new series, but they get messages like each show pretty much. And that was one of the messages. And I got that message before that show came on that said that. But it, it's their message was everything's connected. Mine was everything's interconnected, which I think that's true. And it's like I, I read, I was drawn to reading three different sources in three different places I was just drawn to it and it's amazing how it all fit together and gave me an overall picture of the whole thing from three different sources. And then the video to top it off was like, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, but the, um, 
the first thing that I was um, reading, did I want to talk about that? Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Oh, you watch it? Oh, cool. <laughs> Somebody took their thumbs up away. Boo. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool show, I think, anyway. But the message, the kind of the whole message was, I think Missy kind of summed it up in a way from what I got from everything that I read. And I've, this has come to me before. But it was interesting to read it. Oh, yay, I got it back. <laughs> um, but it was interesting to for it all to come up again because I think every time something comes up, we're maybe understanding it at... Oh. <laughs> um, I think every time something comes up or around again, that it's like it's a... It's coming up for a reason and maybe we're learning it at a deeper level or understanding it even more. And um, her video was just about, kind of just about that. You know, it's like when somebody develops a method, people can come, anybody can come along and follow that method if it's like put into play. And that works to a certain degree, but you still have to have like feel and timing and stuff like that. And if you don't understand that, um, or it might not even work for certain horses. And that's kind of what she was talking about. You have to be able to have a flexible mind to change what you're doing. And I think I was talking about this actually in one of my last videos, maybe with the groundwork um, video live of Mousy last time that you have to be flexible to change that if you're doing something and it's not working, it could be the, the thing that you're doing just isn't working. It's not right. Or it could just be that you're not doing it the right way. You don't have the right intent behind it or the right energy behind it for it to be effective or for the horse to understand it. And so I think there's more to just having a method and following it. And that's, I think, kind of what she was saying, or at least what I got out of it. Um, because it's the same in, in the fitness world, too. Yes, you still need to add your own methods as well. Um, and that's what it is. It's like, and she, she said something about following the mainstream. And... Um, the thing that I was reading this morning, um, I was drawn to one of my chakra books and um, I was drawn to reading about the third chakra, then I was drawn to the first chakra. I wanted to go back to the first chakra and start there. It's been a while since I've really looked at this book and I've had it probably 20 years. <laughs> it's one of my favorite little books. It's just a little tiny book. Um, when I get back in, I'll see if I can like post the title of it below, but it's short to the point. It gives you like a really good understanding of the chakras, but it doesn't say this in that book, but just from studying the chakras that um, the mainstream, following the mainstream, it's like you get caught up in going with the flow or is in the Bible would say you, you, you're in the world view instead of like God's view. You're following the mainstream, what everybody does. <laughs> and it's not really about that. It's about finding your own gifts and your own talents and your own ways of doing things. And I think the only way that you can do that is by being open and, and listening. But the first chakra also deals with the two things as far as like having your guidelines. Yes, don't follow blindly. That's true. And that's, you know, sometimes when you follow certain programs or methods and you're just following it, it works for the general 
public, but there's like so much more to it than that. And then it's about, you know, putting your own touches to it, depending on what you're feeling for that particular person or horse. Um, whether you're like fitness trainer or horse person or whatever you're doing, or even for yourself, you know, it's like, you know, that's, that's how I learned. It's like, you listen to different people, especially if somebody's good at something, you listen to how they do it. And then, um, I take pieces, a little bit of pieces from everybody and use them. And I think your intuition leads you and tells you what you need to do for whatever's going on because you you can have your guidelines of say dieting you have your guidelines and um, if something's not working or you're not getting the results that you want you have to have that mind flexible enough to change whatever it is that you're doing <laughs> I mean if you're too rigid to change and say I just got to keep doing this. This is what it says to do. You know, you're, you get stuck in your first chakra. And that's your grounding. Um, you know, if you're, and this is the stuff that was, that I was reading too, you know, if you're not grounded, if you're, if you feel spacey and you're, ah, just out here, <laughs> all the whatever, <laughs> you don't have the grounding. And then you can be, and then, but that's like flexibility. You're like too flexible. You're too spacey. You can't hold on to anything. <laughs> and, you know, that's actually an energy that if you get on your horse and you're not grounded, they can feel that. <laughs> but then if you're the opposite and you're too grounded, you get too attached to ideas and patterns. And you're not willing to change. It's just going to keep you stuck stuck in your old ways of doing things so it's like it's a combination of the two you have to be grounded enough to not be spacey and like an airhead <laughs> i guess you could say but you don't want to be too stuck in your ways of doing things or stuck in a pattern or a method or a program that you can't th think outside of the box to a certain degree Yes. <laughs> I've never heard it put that way, but that's good. <laughs> yeah. Close the top of your head <laughs> so that energy can't like leak out, right? It's like close it and <laughs> um, yeah. Um, huh. That's an interesting thought. <laughs> I'll have to think about that one. But yeah, you need that grounding. But it just made me it just made me think too of like, you know, when I'm getting ready to ride my horses and if you don't have that grounding, you're not going to be in the present. You're, you're not in the present. Yes, that's true. You know, I think this has to be open a little bit. Um, or at least that's the, that's why I was saying I need to think about that because that's the way I've always sensed it that you know your your seventh energy center up here is open and that's where I feel like I receive but I don't know it came to me earlier that I don't know I might receive it here I'm not sure you know the heart center is the center between the three above and the three below and the three above are the mental the three below are the physical the heart is the spirit the home of the spirit which connects both worlds it connects it gives you the mind body connection and i also see that as jesus jesus comes in your heart and makes you whole you know, and it's like, so I was, that's what came to me today, just from what I was reading. But you still, ha you still have to have all the energy centers 
you know, but I think this might be what leads you to what you need to do <laughs> to stay balanced and to stay centered. I always talk about being centered. That's my thing as a personal trainer is you want to be centered in your body because when you're centered, you're whole. That's where your strength and power is and you can work through your blocks. I was just training somebody yesterday that wants to get bigger. He's pretty built as it is, but it was interesting to... I haven't really worked with somebody like that in a while. And it was interesting to see um, that type of energy that really pushes and that can push. And I can really push. <laughs> hey, I can really push. And it's fun to see. But although, you know, he, he still has blocks. And it's funny because mental, mental blocks as far as being able to push even farther. Um, you know, because I was listening to a CD that I actually got probably a couple years ago, and I've never listened to, but it's the right time now. <laughs> it's funny how things like that happen. And I actually have, actually the little tiny book that I was talking about, it's from, it is her book. And then I also have like a really big book from her too about the chakras. But I remember um, in that book seeing, and I thought it was interesting, but listening to it on the CD, it was even more interesting as far as the, the liberation current is this way, the manifestation current is this way. And when I was training this person, it's like I could actually see that, you know, because if you're trying to, whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether you're trying to get bigger in fitness, if you're trying to lose weight in fitness, if you're trying to do certain things with your horse, it's like you have to, you're trying to manifest it into the physical world. Oh no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think ours is coming up. <laughs> um, the snow, I think ours is coming up. But, um, yeah, the, the manifesting current comes down, and that's, to me, comes down into that first energy center. You, that's getting in touch with your body. Yeah, I think so, too. That's the connector as far as our energy centers. Hey, and um, but the grounding is very important because that's like, that's getting the way I would dis describe it, getting in your body and getting to the present. But like I said, you have to have that balance of like your, um, having your routine, but being able to be flexible and having those two, you know, play their part so you don't get stuck one way or the other. And, um, yeah, that in this book that I'm reading, I think it's called Horses in, Trans Horses in Translation, I think it's called. Um, and I just ordered her first book just like a day or two ago. Um, I was going to wait a while, but something I was reading in this book wanted me to get that book. <laughs> and it's called Hor Horses Speak, I think. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad it makes sense to everybody. All this makes sense to me. And I'm just like feeling like, hey, <laughs> drawn to share this because I, I don't know. I just because I think, I mean, these are the things that I've learned over the years as a personal trainer. I apply them to my horses and they really help me. And now these, all these books that I'm reading, it's like, it all makes sense. I mean, like the, this woman calls it um, zero. The time is now. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's kind of what I feel. You know, before I was afraid of being judged because it is different. And, you know, I do have some fitness clients that understand it. And even if they don't, I say it in different ways to different people. <laughs> and that's why it's like hard to say it here. But like when you come on, I have a feeling that you understand it. So it kind of comes out this way. Not everybody's going to understand it this way. It's really just about being in the present and getting in touch with your horse. 
all this jibber jabber that I talk about. <laughs> and so this lady that writes Horses in Translation, she calls this feeling, um, I can't remember if she says getting to your zero or zero. Um, I, I don't know, I always think ground zero, so grounding. Um, it's, it's, to me, it's that grounding feeling. It's that, that feeling of, and she says the same thing. It's the feeling, I call it being in your body, but, um, but it's like your calmness, your, um, it, you're in the present. You know, your first energy center is your slowest vibration, your slowest energy center. It's more dense it's slower and if you if you think of that energy when you get in touch with that energy it's going to make you go down that's your like that's where you want to get to to manifest anything you have to get down to that point um is that calmness that state of presence um that's where your horses are i think when you get to that point then once you can do that, then it's like, to me, your energy flows up and down. And that's the liberation current and the manifestation current. And the liber liberation current is like when you get to that grounding and then you move your way up. And that's like your um, breathing, your get up and go, your air from your breathing. This is like your, your um, breathing from your diaphragm. Um, your expression, your vision. So if you have a vision um, and then being open to receive and then you come back down. So then you're receiving more information, you're seeing it, you're expressing it <laughs> and it comes down and then you manifest it. So it's about going this way. But the liberation current, so I learned this yesterday. The liberation current, when you go up, it's about releasing old patterns. Then once you release those old patterns, then you can come back down and manifest. And that's what happened yesterday when, hey, when I was training this person where we had done one set, we went heavier and he kind of like fizzled. He, you know, he just, he, I saw it as he lost his, his mind frame because I said, take it one at a time. And then he just like died. And I'm like, I go, this is the only time that I would say that we're going to go down in weight, but I would just want to see something. So we went down in weight and I said, but this time when you do it, do it one at a time. And when you stop at the bottom to catch your breath, don't let your mind go. He was letting his mind go. Then he'd go to lift the weight and he just couldn't do it. I go, you have to always keep your mind there. Even if you stop your rep at the bottom and catch your breath and you explode. And I know that'll make sense to Susan, but... <laughs> It's kind of the same with your horses too. I can't think of an example right now, um, but you have to keep that mind. <laughs> yes, it's finding calm within the chaos because that, yes, that's a good way to put it. Um, and while we're talking about all this, I am, I did put some MTG in his tail. <laughs> um, but yes, because when you're in the middle of a set and you're, or say towards the end of a set, um, it's chaos. And it's about keeping your mind calm, but not letting it go, not giving up. I'll just wait until it quits. <laughs> It's about not giving up and um, yeah, just, just feeling that, you know, it's like I take what I've learned in fitness and um, for myself and with my clients. I take what I've learned for myself and my clients um, and what I feel and try to, yeah, once you, 
Okay, I'm going to have to end this. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but yes, that's true. Once you learn how to find that calm and your zero, as she calls it, um, you can do it anywhere. And I try to do that with my horses because that's where horses are is they're in the present they're in the calm and if we can find that place too that's where you guys get your connection and so anyway i'm gonna have to go and end this but i'll see you i might come back on in a little bit i'm not sure but i'll see you guys later okay have a good night if i don't come back <laughs> have a good night anyway <laughs>